Hey everyone, uh, hope you're doing well. A couple of weeks ago, we were at uh, the Dragon Con in Atlanta, and this stalwart fellow showed up. Uh, where he came from, nobody knows. But he stood there for a while, and we asked him if he could uh, if he'd talk to us for a minute, and he took up this mighty pose. This is the Sentinel of Liberty, Captain America. And, uh, and afterwards, he was gone. We knew not where. Godspeed, Captain America. Um, I'm going to come full circle. I'm going to get back to this guy. Everything I've done so far has come about because I've not been afraid. And I, f I see fear enter people's lives all the time. But like Brian says, I pretty much grasped every opportunity that I've ever had. I'm a writer of comics primarily. This is the first job I had in America. I was writing for DC Comics, Vertigo Comics actually, um, it's a title called Hellblazer. It's one of the most prestigious comics in, uh, as far as professionals go. This is some of the pages of Hellblazer. And I think the assumption that everybody has is that comics are dumb entertainment for dumb children. And I've often tried to change that perception. Because in fact, this is a comic book. The first and earliest form of human expression was cave paintings. And they were done as sequential narratives. In a sense, imagine that you go into a cave. You'll see a buffalo. You'll see men chasing the buffalo with a spear. And you walk further in, and the buffalo has a spear in it. That's a comic book. So I broke into comics the only way that you can't break in. Um, I went down to San Diego Comic Convention. And I went to the editor of Hellblazer, which really is a very, if you knew anything about comics, very prestigious title. It was created by Alan Moore. And uh, I walked up and I said, I'd like to write Hellblazer. And he said, what have you written? And I said, I've never written anything in my life. And he said, get lost. And I said, well, let, let me try writing up a, a script. I wrote a script and there were 25, by his admission, there were 25 established comic book professionals that tried out for that. And they called me up and gave me the job within a week. That's the only way that you cannot break into comics. I'll tell you right now, don't try it because it will never happen. Or maybe it will. See, I'm the exception that proves the rule. What I found in doing Hellblazer was that I began my own quiet revolution within comics. Even comics in those days were not taking themselves seriously. The publishers didn't take their own creations as seriously as I did. I felt there's an opportunity, even if you use American superheroes, to tell very, very interesting stories. I took over the Hulk, and the sales went like that. I took over this guy. So there I was, a little kid five years old. One day I remember walking into a barley field. My family is very fractured. And I lay down in that barley field and I looked up at the sky and I realized that I was making a decision right there and then as a little kid. I was not going to be like my family. One day I was going to write Spider-Man. And this is what I did. I wrote Spider-Man for five years. Um, I had a really successful run. The sales went back up again. Stan Lee called my editor. Stan Lee, the creator of Spider-Man, called my editor and told him to give me a message. He said, you tell that kid he's a genius. That's one of the greatest days of my life. I'm told every day of my life I'm supposed to be afraid. And Rob and I have the worst company motto in the world. Um, it's a little bit long-winded. Those who say it can't be done should get out of the way of those of us already doing it. It's a terrible motto, isn't it? But it makes sense to us. I consider myself to be one of the luckiest people in the world, but I feel as though I made my luck because I took every opportunity that was given to me. I consider my job not a right, but a privilege. And I feel as though it's also a responsibility. I have a responsibility to this fella and all of the people that line up for my signature. I'll sign for as long as it takes. I've signed for eight hours in the past. Uh, one thing that happened to me this last year, I was doing a signing. There's one fella that was sitting right at the back and he was very nervous about getting signed. Now, sometimes the fans are like that. Um, he was really, really nervous of talking to me. And he, um, he stood at the back, and they capped the line, and everybody, and I caught his eye, and I said, hey, man, do you, want, do you want a signature? And he just nodded, and he climbed under the rope, and he brought up one single comic book. It was an issue of Hellblazer that I did many years ago. 
He put it in front of me, didn't say a word. I signed it for him. I said, I started to engage him in conversation and he scarped. A week later, I got an email from that very same guy. He said, I don't know if you remember me, but you might remember what happened to me seven years ago. The particular issue of Hellblazer was about how sometimes in our families, um, we will lose a family member, perhaps uh, our parent or grandparent dies, and yet at the same time, your brother has a baby, something like that. And how we gravitate towards, you know, how it happens in every family. Seven years before, that guy had lost his father and his brother, his brother's wife had given birth. And he was so guilty about being happy that his brother's wife had given birth and he missed his father so much that he prepared to commit suicide. Um, it's a little emotional for me. So he came, he went to his comic store on a Wednesday. He found my issue. He read the story. And instead of committing suicide, he realized it happens to everybody. He's the guy that came to me those many years later. Which goes to show that even this guy, I have a responsibility to him too. Because they invite me into their home once a week. And whatever happens, however I do tattoo, however I do comics, however I do video games, I'm never going to be afraid of doing them. Thanks very much.